Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. So I'm in my prayer closet, and I wanted to mention this the other day. The Holy Spirit had put upon my heart Psalm 32 and Psalm 119, um, and he told me to meditate on Psalm 119. It's the longest psalm. Um, I can read Psalm 32 to you, and if you'd like to read Psalm 119, it's beautiful. Um, I do have an NIV study Bible, but uh, a lot of people do uh, the King James Version. Um, I also have a King James Version Bible, but Psalm 32 says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the summer heat, or heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with the songs of deliverance. Selah is over here. This is found in um, the Bible uh, quite a bit. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous, seeing all you who are upright in heart. Amen. So let me turn to Psalm 119. I do um, color in my study Bible. Sometimes it's relaxing. Um, so one thing I wanted to mention, um, I won't read all of Psalm 119, all, although um, he had told me to study this psalm, and I like this study Bible because um, it, it has caught a lot of commentary on the side and on the bottom. So I just want to mention here, uh, it's talking about how does a person meditate on God's Word. Meditation is a combination of re reviewing repeating, reflecting, thinking, analyzing, feeling, and even enjoying. It is a physical, intellectual, and emotional activity. It involves our whole being. In some ways, meditation doesn't fit into the Western world. We value action and busyness more than stopping and considering. The author, author of this psalm was from another time and culture, one with a tradition that valued meditation. As a result, Meditation came more naturally for him and others with his Middle Eastern background. We have to overcome some cultural obstacles to learn to meditate. There are many ways to meditate on God's Word. Some possibilities include taking time to read a verse or passage over and over. Begin to meditate all or part of it. Listen. Quiet your heart to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you through God's Word. Consider how it fits with the rest of the Bible and life in general. Become emotionally involved. Allow yourself to feel what God feels, his desires expressed through his words. Move from meditation to application. Connect your thoughts to action. Consider how the truth and power of the word of God should affect your behavior. So um, I just wanted to mention that to you, that the Lord had put uh, Psalm 32 and Psalm 119 on my heart. Um, they're beautiful psalms, and I um, just wanted to share that with you, and I hope it encourages you and blesses you today. Um, you know, anything that I speak, you can take to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to um, speak to you, to reveal truth to you. Um, God's Word, the Holy Bible is alive. Um, Jeremiah 33 3 says call unto me and I will answer you and tell you great unsearchable things you do not know 
um, which is why my channel is called His Humble Servant 333. Um, so God bless you today and every day. Amen.